What's up? It's Penuel, the Black Pen. So I've got kind of like mixed emotions about today's sit down. Um, I've got an amazing lady that I'm going to be chatting with, Bianca Costa from Eswatini, the kingdom of Eswatini. I've got mixed emotions for many reasons. One of them being, I met Bianca, geez, many years ago now, when she was still in high school. I went to go and speak at a high school, Matthews Posa College uh, in Pumalanga. And then she moved to Joburg and I was kind of asked, let's put it nicely, I was kind of asked to be her mentor, which a lot of people found dodgy because <laughs> she was this young, pretty girl. So I was like, how oh, mentorship? Um, over the years, a lot of people have gotten to know her without really knowing her by seeing her face, having opinions about her. I know her, I know her dreams, I know her family having visited her home and meeting her mom and her dad and her brother and her sister. She's met my family. And part of why I wanted to sit with her as well today is because I feel she's being cyber bullied. She'll confirm or not. And it's something I'd like us to address. I'd like her to address because I can imagine there may be some other people that are dealing with something similar. So this is just an introduction. But from here, moving forward, I'm going to be focusing on her. But I hope you guys will enjoy our conversation. Bianca, welcome. Thank you for having me. What voice is that? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. So a lot of people know you, but don't know you. Mm. They've seen your face. Sadly, now there's a Twitter account with 1.6 million followers called Chris Excel that uses your face as the profile and even as the back banner yeah i saw that yeah. we'll speak about that last okay if you don't mind i think just to introduce yourself to people that don't know who you are mm -hmm. where's home how did you grow up how did you end up in Joburg? okay um i am bianca zipe zinkle costa you got a black name i'll see kalati <laughs> it's zulu zulu my grandmother yes she's actually from newcastle newcastle is the best town mm -hmm. on the she's planet she's actually buried there really mm, my mom's mom you related. didn't know that. Maybe related. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I must so. ask. No, okay, um, I was born and bred in Swaziland. I did my primary schooling there and then I moved to South Africa for my high schooling. That's at Matthews Posa College. Uh, finished that and then I was convinced Guti, I was going to be a CA. <laughs> that was me. That was my life. I'm a chartered accountant. PWC, KPMG, that was me. And that's Partly why I was linked with you and Mel at that time, because yeah. you guys were in that accounting yeah. space. So uh, I came to Joburg and I went to UJ because UJ has the best uh, accounting program. One of the best in yes, the country, one, right? One of the best. One of the best. <laughs> one of the best accounting programs in the country. Okay. I was told. Sure. Yes, I was told. So I went to UJ. I was like, OK, guys, this is me. CA put me in. And they were like, no, your math. Jeez. And then that's when uh, someone advised me to go to Vitz Star School to upgrade my maths. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went and I did that and I tried again. Still nothing. I, I think I went like a level higher. Jeez. Yeah. I, I got level. Should I say <laughs> what level I got? No, you don't have to. Okay, cool. I just went a level higher. So let's say I got level four, which I didn't. I just got a level higher than what yeah. I got. And still it wasn't good enough for me to get into the accounting program. So then I did... Um, I was just, I was uninterested now. I was just like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And then they just gave me like, oh, just do a BA general. I didn't even understand it at the time. Sure. There was no passion, no nothing. I was just doing it just because, mm -hmm. you know, I want to say I'm at school. So I did that and I, funny enough, I excelled in yeah. that. And then my final year, I was given a scholarship to do my honors in industrial sociology. That's dope. So UJ paid my fees for my honors. And then I did that i got my honors and here we are so now in between all of that social media happened mm -hmm. uh, i started growing my presence online very it was unintended mm -hmm. you know i just took a lot of selfies and then people like those selfies and then i just uh, my presence grew grew and then brands brands started uh hitting me up yeah and that's how i got into the influencing space mm -hmm. and then in the midst of that too i started getting called in for television work your ads your com uh, commercials and uh, print work i did mm -hmm. some print work and yeah that's how do i found speak, myself in this space do you speak indigenous languages swati your parents are what uh swati 
both of them yes you guys speak different languages no just swati and english S- mostly english yeah my dad knows a bit of portuguese yeah yeah that's dope how was your upbringing you've got siblings as well yeah i do i do which are really <laughs> dope siblings by the way yeah they are yeah i had the best childhood i always saw this to people the perf- it was the perfect family mom dad siblings mm-hmm. traveling christmas we all wear our pjs and wrapping gifts i had the best family sure. you know we would all jump into bed together and snuggle it was ah, perfect my idea of perfect yeah. perfect family yeah do you think that do you think it helped you in life do you think maybe like it gave you like a a wrong impression because i've met people who come from like perfect families and they realize the world is not what they thought it was i think now mm. it it was it's both a blessing and a curse yeah i think you know my parents yeah. eventually divorced so that slap in the face was hard mm. it was really hard and it it changed my whole cuz i was always that go everybody knew mommy and daddy Yeah. school come open day mommy and daddy are there you know i was always that girl and to have that like stripped away it was hard <laughs> probably one of the worst times of my life mm. i always say to people that i would have had a perfect life if my parents didn't divorce i don't want to speak about their divorce but i don't know why you raised it <laughs> you can must have cost i'm so sorry it's bianca's fault <laughs> you can um your parents are okay now and do you think that's affected how you view relationships how you deal with relationships in your life when you say okay what do you mean do they get along because we worry about that you know uh, the divorce is only one part they don't talk at all at all but you guys the kids are okay yeah we're with okay both of them. yeah we're okay it just makes it a bit awkward awkward when we have like i had my graduation dinner and they yeah. had to be in the same space so you just like okay please no drama please no drama yeah yeah when i met your parents i i thought they were perfect for each other right just i to what you're saying i visited your home because of what a stunning home uh met your brother i uh, met your sister you guys are like a perfect family like it's a bit annoying for like normal people yeah so when that happened obviously i was concerned and i i normally want to get involved because i counsel people mm. in relationships and i remember you went to see my dad at some point yeah yeah like i wanted to know if there was anything i even went to see your mom as mm. well and i told mm. your dad at the time because i was like i'm sure there must be something that can be resolved yeah i, I don't know their life yeah. i don't know how their relationship has been but because they seem so dope and that's such, such like really awesome kids it broke my heart yeah um did it affect your romantic relationships like do you view them the same do you still want like a perfect life for yourself and your kids i definitely do same as you had yes okay i definitely do i don't see myself raising kids any other way okay i need to have a husband and a good husband at that and he needs to be loving towards my kids the way my dad was what's a good husband <laughs> my dad my dad towards me okay what my dad was to me i don't know with my a mom good father you don't know if he was a good husband Yes. You know he was a good father. I just want somebody who yeah. If he could just be 50% of Tony, I I know I'm in good hands. Sure. Yeah. Um you get to Joburg. Yeah. You have a dream. Um sorry, UJ does have one of the best accounting programs. Mm-hmm. I I did honors in accounting at UJ coming from Rhodes. And their lecturers at the time uh Afrikaans white there was a Indian gentleman there was a black gentleman they could speak English and Afrikaans all of them uh most of them were the ones that would set the papers for the board exams and it had the biggest class in the country at the time yeah. so I know I was like one of the best but they were pretty dope um first time dealing with some type of rejection in your life because I I know you were a top student at yeah. MPC yes I was, I was so now you're getting rejected dark scholar uh, Uh, the certificate says learner no did in you say dax what did yes, you say dax d u the top student yes in grade 9 it's dope. in mpumalanga hectic so it's not a big hit for nothing <laughs> <laughs> so you get to you get to visit and you get rejected how do you deal with that like i said i was very uninterested in what i was doing yeah. at that time i didn't even understand it it's like now i must pick what do i want to do politics i'm going to do politics now i want I just didn't understand. I was just doing it to say I'm at school yeah. if I'm being completely honest and I would see where this thing leads me. Yeah. And then 
obviously towards the end, then I'm like, oh, okay, I can actually do this. And then I could probably be a psychologist. I could probably be a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Your parents were supporting whatever you do. My my parents are the best. Yeah. If I wanted to be, my dad would always say, whatever you want to do, just if you want to be a stripper, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. My parents would, uh, would always say, I want to know you. Yeah. I don't want you to come home and have a facade. So I want to know you. If you want to do this, tell me. Yeah. And then we can work around it. And that's what I appreciate about them. Did you know you were pretty <laughs> growing up and at MPC? <laughs> no, it's an important question for me because it's important because there are a lot of mostly females yeah. um, who grow up in spaces and don't understand the dynamics. Mm -hmm. So they think, oh, everyone was nice to me growing up. It's like, well... Maybe it's because you are white or you are light-skinned or because your parents were rich or because your dad was a politician. So I'm trying to figure out before you got to varsity because I want to contrast the two. Number one, when I was in school, I didn't know people could hate you for nothing. You know, I thought everyone <laughs> was nice to me until I got to varsity. Yeah. Um, I didn't know looks were a currency. I thought we all looked the same in high school. And then when you got to varsity, people wanted to know you just because of how you look. And I was like, but you don't even know what I'm studying or what I do. So I'm trying to figure out if you knew you were pretty or if you were just a girl growing up before you got to varsity. I think I just existed. Yeah. And I know you you probably don't believe me, but I never really... I was actually very insecure and yeah. I still am. I, don't I, I know that from when I met you. Genuinely. Do genuinely, you know that? I genuinely knew so that. So stop saying I, <laughs> you're very <fake> humble. <laughs> Because I I'm I say that off camera. You're not supposed to say that on camera. <laughs> Sorry, I I I've never thought that I was the hottest thing on this earth, and I'm to this day. so beautiful. Till this day, I'm just like yo. Mm. I I'm actually very intimidated when I'm around people. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, and I don't believe. Do you think the kids at school, the kids at home, were like that? They were just like Bianca, or did they treat you a certain way? When you look back. When I look back, uh, it just the whole thing just makes me insecure because, like, I, I, in high school, I was uh, a library assistant. Then I became a prefect. Then yeah. I became a deputy head prefect. And then I was eventually head girl. So yeah. now I think back, I was like, was it because I was light skinned or pretty, and I could represent the school? And it makes me insecure. Yeah. It, it takes away from what the I, work you put in. Yeah. Yeah. It so does. so then you get to varsity. Yeah. Where there's. <laughs> Varsity boys <laughs> from all over. You have freedom. And there's also older men. Did your perception of yourself change? Because I can imagine the reception from people changed. No. Still the same? Still the same. Did you still think you were normal and people treated you like you were normal? I still do. To this day? Pinwell. Well, do you I think it's the do. people you surround yourself with? Perhaps. Because I'm not really out there like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know we never made it a thing when we met you. <laughs> I hope. No, you. But not at everywhere, all. everywhere we'd go together. Like I said, firstly, a lot of the guys that I'd meet when I'm like, oh, I'm mentoring her, they were like, oh, sure, mentoring. Um, and obviously, a lot of girls. I think girls actually acknowledge when you're pretty. Oh my gosh, she's so pretty. Yeah. But people would make a thing about it, and one of the things I know. So there's light skin privilege, and then there's pretty privilege. Mm -hmm. A lot of girls that I've met struggle with people don't take me seriously. I feel like I have to work twice as hard. And then other people who don't look like them are like, ah, whatever, that's not really a complaint. It's like, but it's a real thing because this is my sense of self. Exactly. I want people to acknowledge me for the work that I'm doing. Yeah. But in the spaces you've been in since school and now, you're telling me people have not made you feel like, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. And you've generally kept people that are human and see you as a Human mm, being. I think so, yeah. I haven't had that hype. And yeah. I, like, honestly, I haven't. And your parents have never set you down to speak about <laughs> things? <laughs> no, not at all. Really? Hmm. So what happens now when you go... Because I think in high school, knowing you, I don't think you were known by the country and the world. You get to varsity, you take pictures. Yep. And it goes berserk. Even for me. I thought you were pretty-ish. Like, she's okay. <laughs> But the type of hype that went out, I was like, hey, okay, maybe I don't know what's going on. I think it's, there are people that are talented. Mm -hmm. Sports people, um, academic people. Like, let's say the top student in your school, you're okay, this person's smart. 
when they get to like a VITS UCT and they're like top of other kids and then they go to Harvard, you're like, okay, maybe this person's smarter than I thought. Um, you went crazy online. And I remember, especially with the Instagram boom, a lot of people would repost your pictures. Mm -hmm. I know you saw those. I know your family saw those. Were there really no conversations with people? Was there really nothing? Like, were you not feeling some type of way with this? Because I can also imagine like a, a fear. I'd be scared if I was a girl with my picture everywhere and people speaking about me a certain way. They never actually spoke about me in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, they would just create the fake accounts. You know, Chris XL is not my first rodeo. I've okay. had tons of fake accounts. I've had people um, DMing me, telling me, hey, you, I sent you money to come see me. Jeez. But it wasn't me. It was a fake account. So I've, it's, he's not my first rodeo. He or she is not my first rodeo. It's yeah. just the first one that's been loud and yeah. so evident. But no, man, they just use my pictures. And I never had a problem with it before until now. Yeah. It never really bothered me. I wouldn't lose sleep over it. I'd just be like, okay, cool, it's whatever. You can just use my pictures. And I didn't think, oh no, I'm so gorgeous. Everybody, no. Yeah. It's just like, ah, they're just using my pictures for sneaky stuff. But I never thought it's because I'm so pretty. Oh my gosh, no. Are you really still insecure now? I really am. Why? Why do you think you're insecure? And do you think it has anything to do with your looks? I don't know the answer to that. But I just don't think I'm what people say I am. You don't I, go I think out, you don't party? No, I don't go out, I don't party, don't drink, don't smoke. It's just... You're a loser of sorts. <laughs> I am, and I'm happy, so comfortable. I don't wish for anything else. This I don't desire anything else. I don't desire... Ah, man, I don't desire anything, Penwell. When I met you, you wanted to do TV work? Yes. Um... I think at some point you ended up emceeing, I think, a gig, yes. a Swatini. Yes. Um, why do you think you wanted to get into TV, potentially become a celebrity, considering you're saying your personality is more introverted? Yeah. I think I've always had a love for television. Mm. Like, growing up, I'd always be the performer in the house. I'd always be the one, Daddy, I said no. You know, I'd always be the performer. I remember one time my dad had a... Um, what is it, the end of year function at his yeah. work and then they called all the kids to go dance and whoever and I actually won the prize and this was like me six, seven and I won yeah. the prize. So I've always been that kind of person like I wanted to perform and then in high school, same thing. Mm. I have all these certificates from dancing and reciting poetry and public speaking. I was actually even in the debate team. Yeah. I represented Mbumalanga in debate. That's dope. Yeah. So I've always just wanted to be to have a voice. And to perform. And to perform. Yeah. Yeah. It's something you still dream about now? It is. What what type of work would you be looking for? Television. But what what's that? You could I'd be like... in the news, you could act, <laughs> you could, I don't know. I would like to act. I'd like to be an actress, but it's, yeah. It's? It's been a bit of a challenge. Have you been to auditions? Uh, countless auditions. Really? Callbacks. Penwell. <laughs> Oh, are you even countless, a good actress? Countless. Are you a good actress? That's what though? I'm saying. It's not easy. People yeah. just think because you have a pretty face, you can just be on television. That It's hard. Sure. You really need to... The pretty face might get, might get you into the room, but and yeah. then when you... To stay there, you really need to be... Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I wish I had known that you could study for acting. I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know this back in the days. We were not like... I didn't know about AFTA. I didn't know about these institutions... If I had known, I would probably would have went that route. Yeah. And I was studying acting and stuff. Do your parents um, approve of you becoming a TV person? Yes, they do. Yeah. They're very supportive. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So now I need to mentor you again and try help you. Yes. You're old now. <laughs> no, but I still need guidance. Everyone needs a mentor. You know, um, I would normally tell people that I am shy and introverted. And a lot of people <laughs> pull that face. Like, ow. <laughs> And I'm like, for real. And I used to perform yeah. as a kid. I would also do the, the poetry. I stayed for yes. singing in choir and those things. And normally the, the example I'd use with people, because I wanted to perform, like mm -hmm. what you're saying, I'd use Michael Jackson and Beyonce. And I used to tell them, as far as I'm concerned, both of them are incredibly shy and introverts. I think Michael Jackson, it was more known. A lot of people know Michael with his soft voice. And a lot of people are not aware that Beyonce is an introvert. So Beyonce doesn't go out and party. 
she's throwing a party. Hey, guy, hey, come through. She's very much a homebody. But she gets on stage and she performs. And listening to you speak, I'm getting a sense of, guys, I just want to perform. It's not that I want to be the coolest person in the thing. I just want a platform where I get to express my art. Um, I think there are a lot of people like that that are really misunderstood. Um, and I don't know if you've got role models that you look up to, aspire to. Um, people that maybe even when you were a kid, you were like, I want to be like that person. I don't know if you remember. In the South African industry? Anywhere. I think now I graduate towards your Viola Davis, your okay. Oprah. The, Viola the, works, boy. I She's like got, the... you, oh, Viola's got ugly privilege. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm going to say this because this doesn't oh, exist. Fenwell. Yes, I'm going to say this, shame. No, so Viola Davis, Miss um, Viola Davis is not ugly by, by the long, a long stretch of, stretch of the imagination. I've heard girls look down on light-skinned guys. Mm -hmm. there's a, like a yellow bone pose and these things and it's like some guys are attacking me call this guy's like this guy he looks like he can't even hurt anything so when it comes to some of the spaces you're speaking about it could be academics could be the business world it could be acting yeah when you look at some of the more prominent actors it is not the most good looking or prettiest or most light-skinned people so she has this thing that when she comes into a room people automatically want to take her seriously Beyonce is not a great actress, so she's not a good example. But yeah. compared to like a Beyonce where they come in and they're not as engaged. So I almost understand. I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay. I'm sorry to steal your shine a little bit. In my second year in varsity, I didn't know looks were a thing. I started meeting guys and girls who were drawn to me because of my looks. To this day, I think my eyebrows are banging. I've got like these Ferrari eyebrows. <laughs> But I think I'm ordinary looking. Mm -hmm. In my second year, I had an identity crisis. And I started reading Black Consciousness stuff, Steve Beagle and, and those guys. And I wanted to be more African. I wished I spoke different English. And I wished when I speak English, the English that I speak would sound, hey, you sound like an African. Yeah. And I would say, yes, as you can hear, I come from Africa. So I literally started changing the way I speak. And I spent one holiday at home in the sun because I wanted to be darker because I wanted to be more African um, and it speaks to what I'm saying now mm. that like you feel like when you get in certain spaces when you're darker when you have a broken accent if you say something profound you know for sure that it's not because of how I look it's not because of how I sound it's because of me it's because of my work mm. you know and Viola has that no one can ever accuse her of ah it's because she's pretty that's what I meant by ugly privilege. Mm. Sorry, I interrupted you. I was just saying. So do you think that's the case with me? That's why I, I would aspire to be like someone like Viola because I don't want it to just be about, oh, you're so pretty. You're using Viola and Oprah. So I interrupted you. I don't know if you're going to mention other people, mm. but you're using Viola and Oprah who are known for their work. Yeah. No one will ever accuse them of being men. No one will ever accuse them of being white. No one will ever accuse them of being light skinned. Uh, no one will accuse them of being pretty. Yeah. It's literally their work. So that's pretty dope that you mentioned them. I don't know if you were going to carry on. Sorry. No, no. They're Oprah and Viola. Yeah. Those are the people that I'm like, oh, you know, when you watch Viola, it's like, geez. Yeah. That's do you, the kind do of, you practice your skill? I do. Do monologues. I do. When I go for auditions, they obviously give you scripts. I'll go through them and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Have you considered social media? What I mean is literally practicing monologues, putting a phone Recording or a them, camera. Yeah. And showing people, because I, I hate CVs in an age of technology. Like, yeah. you claim that you are a teacher. Show me video clips of you teaching in a class. Have you considered that? I've thought about it, yeah. Mm. But again, the insecurities. Again, this is where we need to come in and push. Unfortunately. <sighs> How are your siblings yeah, doing? I, sorry. sorry. I feel like Abantu Batotzi, hi, uendanlo. Mm. You're just a pretty face. Just sh take pictures. Now she's trying to act. Yeah. Yeah. And now with the whole Chris XL thing, it's even worse. Like, oh no, she's only on that TV show because she's Chris XL. Mm. Oh no, she got this because she's, you know. So it's a very demotivating on my end. But it's This is like a real thing. Yes, Penwell. I don't think people understand how 
this Chris XR thing mm. and this pretty privileged thing really affects me. Why why not just ride your looks? Why not slay? Why not be like, well, if I'm pretty then maybe niggas must pay and I must find like a rich nigger. Why why not? Why not do that? Why in your head are you like, no? Why don't you just become a slay queen? Girls come to Joburg. <laughs> People are like, oh, you're so pretty. Next thing, they're in all the clubs. Next thing, they riding shotgun in the passenger seats of some guy's car. Mm -mm. Next thing, oh my gosh, do you know Bianca got married to this guy? Wow. Why can not I, that? Can I tell you a story? Go for it. I was in Switzerland a couple of weeks back and I was with my sister and uh, a friend of ours and we were chilling like at a wine boutique. They were having drinks and then there was this lady uh, and a gent sitting next to us. So the lady comes up to me. She's like, oh, Bianca, you're so pretty. I, I follow you on Instagram. Can we take a picture? We took the picture. And then uh, she whispers in my ear. She's like, dude, I feel like you're sleeping on yourself. And I'm like, what do you mean? And, she, and, uh, and she's like, um, you could have anything you want. You don't have to sleep with them. You could have anything you want. Like, I can't make this up. And I just looked at her like, okay, thank you. So are you bringing that up right now it's not something you I hear it all the time you're sleeping on yourself you could be you could be you could be doing someone once once told me you could be doing serious people like mm -hmm. I could be dating serious people and I could have everything and all of that but I think um you know I'm not interested in things that people find fascinating I don't care about Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci and traveling and having a Range Rover and it's not being fake humble I genuinely don't care for those things mm -hmm. I, I don't know, maybe it's just the way I am and I know that most people wouldn't believe it, but I genuinely don't care. Even me with my work wanting to act, I don't want to be, oh, I want to be rich. I just want to be comfortable as long as I can eat, I have shelter. Uh, if I want to travel, if I need to help out my family, mm -hmm. I'm good. I don't want what everybody believes I should want. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's weird. I don't know if you, maybe you think that's weird, but I genuinely don't care for those things. They're not fulfilling. Nothing fulfills me. Do you think it's values from home? Do you think it's your parents and your upbringing? Or do uh, you think it's just you? I think it's just me. Like I'm trying to figure out if like your sister like likes nice things. If your brother's like, hey, I mean, I want to have, I want to have the Range Rover, you know. To come to think of it, maybe it is my family. Maybe it is. Yeah. Because none of my si siblings are like that. We're not mm. like... Because we all have put poten potential yeah. to come here and be the, you know, yeah. hosting at Monta <laughs> Montana and doing all these things. Yeah. We all have that potential. But I don't know. You know, uh, growing up, my dad would always tell me, you you can always come home. Mm. If he chose your clula, come home. You have food, you have shelter, and we'll work around it. Or you can always come home. And because of that, I feel like I'm not going to compromise myself. I'm not going to sleep, sleep with multiple men to get this. Yeah. I, I don't need that. It's, it's, it won't give me peace. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you're not a Christian, but like I, I, I'm, yeah. a, <laughs> I'm a Christian. I have those values, and I'm not going to compromise myself for anything, yeah. anyone. And I'm just not interested. You know, one of the things, so I'm a guy, normal guy. Yeah. One of the things we men struggle with is women that have amazing fathers. <laughs> You'd think like it would be cool, but normally girls with amazing superhero fathers come with these super high standards that we normally can't meet. Yeah. And it's a weird form of daddy issues. If your dad bought you a car and gave you money, there's these girls that when they start dating, they look for a guy that can do that. Yeah. And they end up dating these really old guys because they can provide. The young guys have nothing. Your mom is amazing. Yeah. But your father, I know from seeing him, from speaking to him, from you, what an amazing father he is. And I don't know what he did right where I don't think you have that. And I don't know if you know how he got it right so if you can explain why you don't have that thing where you're like my dad's amazing so if you're not like my dad because your dad is good looking is well built he works really hard <laughs> etc but you don't seem to chase your father you're kind of fine with if you and i are okay it's fine why, why do you think you didn't fall into the trap of like wanting an old man like your dad yeah. for example i think maybe it's because 
yes, my dad was cool actually. Like we had, we were comfortable as a family, yeah. but there was also a bond beyond that. Mm. So that's what I want in a man. I'm not gonna be with you because you're a businessman and you can buy me stuff. I don't care for that. I want the cuddles. What are we going to talk about when we're cuddling? Cuddling is so gay, <laughs> but okay. Carry on. I, I want that intimacy. I don't know if I'm if I'm translating this correctly, but yeah. I just want intimacy. I don't care, Guti, you're an athlete, you're a businessman. You, I don't care about that. I want when you... I, don't wanna, I almost said when you strip naked. <laughs> <laughs> when it's just you yeah. and me. Strip like naked what, figuratively. And yes, like when you're just naked, when, yeah. you, when you don't have a title, when you... Just you. What? Who are you? Can yeah. I relate to you? You know, Pinwa, I'm sorry to, to go off uh, topic, but like my dad, I can't explain. It's not even, I don't love him because I can be like, daddy, my car broke down. And then he's, he's going to pull. It's not because of what he does. It's just who he is. Mm. There'll be moments when I'm so overwhelmed, Pinwa, so overwhelmed. And I just pick up the phone mm. and then he's like, hi, Mumu. And I just immediately cry like... <laughs> And he doesn't say anything. And then he'll just be like, have you eaten? And just <laughs> that, man, I, I, I don't know how to properly articulate how amazing my dad is. Yeah. But he's just so amazing. There's There have been moments where I, I, I drive back home and I see him and I've just been so overwhelmed. And I just give him a hug and I just start crying on his on his chest, just crying. Yeah. And he's just holding me. Yo, do you date? I'm literally getting... <laughs> I'm literally getting goosebumps. Yes, I do. Do you? Mm. you no, know, I'm asking because the other daddy issue that we have is my dad is enough. So I kind of don't need <laughs> another man because he's enough. Oh, jeez. Do, do you go for looks? I know. <laughs> I, know some know. Of, I know some of your exes. So I'm trying I to don't. Out, you don't go for looks at I all. I don't go for looks. I don't go for your credentials. Good to see you are. Because mm. I, I have a lot of proposals from DJs, businessmen, married men, athletes. I don't care. Are you scared? Of? Of being with the high profile guy. I'm not scared. I'm okay. not scared. I could be, but I just don't want to be with you because of. Yeah, but it sounds like you probably reject gents because of their profile. Do you give them a fair chance? I tried that now. <laughs> For the first time? <laughs> For the first time. I, I. So so uglier guys had a better chance. Uglier nobodies had a better chance with you. No. Did you give every guy a fair chance? Yes. In the past? Be honest. I have. Be honest. <laughs> I have been well. I have. I think So I you wouldn't have. look at like a rich guy with a fancy car who's popular and be like, uh, I don't know, versus this loser of a boy is like, hi, you like Wait, oh. so you basically saying with Simina, I like losers. No, I don't know your exes. Okay. I don't know. But uh <laughs> What are you trying to say? Speak about what I was saying before, like <laughs> Viola. Yeah. <laughs> um I've met girls who are not interested in a guy with like a Built body, yeah. Because number one, they're like, yo, if this guy gets angry, it might hurt me, because he's he's big. Yeah. The other thing is like, oh, but with all those muscles, I don't know. Then there's girls who aren't into good-looking guys. They're like, oh, he's probably gonna cheat, or he's probably full of himself, or whatever. There's a lot of girls that I've met that are scared of what we call successful guys, because they're like, I don't know if I'll be myself around him. He's got so much money. He's so famous. Will I be able to really tell him how I feel? Mm. Or will I always have to be like, oh, but maybe I'll lose this nice life. Maybe he's such a big deal where he's at. I don't know if he'll ever listen to me. Um, and some of those girls, even like I remember at Varsity, some of those girls, they'd get proposals from these really big guys. And they'd be like, I'm just scared. I just want to be with the guy where if you're pissing me off, I'll be like, fuck you, go die. Because <laughs> with this guy, I don't know. I don't know if I can say that. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable. There are guys that feel like that with certain girls. They're like... She feels like she's above my league. Yeah. And you're like, you haven't even met her. It's like, I just know that whatever she does, I'll probably forgive her and I, I won't be myself. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out if I understand. you discriminate against like gents who are like doing well and are good looking and stuff and go for like the more loserish guys. I go for guys that I can be myself around. I never want to put on a facade. Have you dated a guy that has a lot of money? <laughs> discrimination ah oh, man have you but what do they have to offer Benoit bags no I'm just asking trips. I'm just uh, no not what he offers I'm just asking have you ever been with a guy he could be an amazing human 
Yeah. But he just happens to have a lot of money. No. No. You discriminate. No, Peno, I don't Have you ever look... dated a famous guy? Yeah. And how was that? Um, I don't know how I feel about it. <sighs> so the losers have a better chance. No, Peno, it's not about mm. that, dude. It's about the person. Anyway, shame. You give losers hope, man. No, Penwa. Hey guys, man. You know, if you're a loser, nyana, ugly, nyana. So you want me to go, out, oh, wait? Are you saying I should go for those kind of men? No, no, I'm not. Um, I know you. I understand your insecurities. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand. It's worse now that you have like a. You have like an a, a loud online presence. Yeah. Um, I've met people who are very rich. I've met people who are very famous. I've met people that come from certain families. They carry a certain surname. Um, they don't know who to trust. And they don't know people that have ulterior motives. Yeah. So you don't know if this guy coming here saying, hey, are you okay? You don't know if that's genuine. Yeah. Or if this is like a wolf or a vulture that is just waiting for their time. Um, and it's worse when you're a girl. You know, I, I apologize to your parents because I know they want to be watching this. <laughs> But when you're a girl and a decent looking girl, almost every guy wants to, is trying to sleep with you. You know, whether they mean it or not, even your guy friends, even the guys who are like, no man, it's just at some point they kind of like, I'll hope one day. Like it's, I, I guess it's, it's the laws of nature. It's yeah. one of the reasons I now struggle with working with women because some women do have ulterior motives, whether they're aware of it or not. At some point, if they spend enough time with you, they have an idea of who you are. Mm -hmm. And then they spend time with you like, oh my, this guy is really amazing. And he's so amazing with these kids. I think I like him. You're like, no. So the insecurities become really high and you don't know who to trust. Now, when you get like a guy version of Viola Davis, you kind of like, I don't, he doesn't have money. <laughs> he's not really good looking. So I think he's here for me. I don't know. But it might not be that. And the next guy who's rich, famous good looking maybe has the same thing you have maybe they're insecure maybe they don't know but you're looking at that guy and you're like uh, and he's looking at you like uh, yeah and you guys end up not being together because you both have these perceptions of each other which is kind of sad i i used to so another story of mine is at varsity i started discriminating against good looking people when i was going through my identity crisis mm -hmm. when i'd meet like a good looking girl I'd almost not want to hear what she has to say. When I met good looking guys, I'd kind of be bored because I was like, I'm sure everywhere you go in life, people just treat you well <laughs> and I'm not going to give you that. And yeah. it, it's nuanced, complex dynamics of the world we live in where you meet, I'm the descendant of Nelson Mandela or, you know, Patrice is my dad and you already feel some type of way around me. Whether I try my best to be genuine or not, everywhere we go, you'll be reminded. Oh my gosh, you're dating whoever's son. Mm. Oh my gosh, you would this, like, yeah, guys, but it's not like this at home. But it's like, it's hard. And you almost want to be with a normal person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I, I'd like to have this conversation with you off camera because you just made me think. Sure. Yeah. You just made me think. I never knew it was an issue. No, it's... Like mising rich men, mising the successful men. I yeah. thought I'm doing... Yeah, no. I don't want to be that girl. But now you actually got me thinking. You're literally rejecting them because of whether you're aware of it or not. And I'm not saying you must because a lot of yeah. those guys are assholes, actually. I know, yeah. Because everyone treats them like they shit gold. Um, <laughs> but some of them shame are good people. You just need to give them a shot. Yeah. Um... I don't want you to cry on camera, so please behave. Okay. I got touched when I first saw Chris Excel, Chris Excel's profile. Uh, it was early days, and he was saying these misogynistic, really not, not nice things to women. Yeah. You know. But I was like, I, I also thought it was going to be one of those troll accounts, fly by night, it yes, will come yes, and yes, go. Yes. Then at some point, the account grew, and... I was one of the people who was like, well, that's not really your profile picture. I know the lady who's... And I thought it would be a whatever and other people would... And I thought he would change it. Mm. And he hasn't. Um, 
maybe, maybe without speaking further, how has this account in particular affected your life in a personal way? Okay, I'll just uh, go back a little bit. Yeah. When this whole uh, Chris XL thing started, uh, I was not on Twitter. My sister was Chantal. Yeah. She was on Twitter. And, um, I wanted she... to ask about your siblings. We got derailed. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll speak about them on another platform. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, she was on Twitter, so she obviously saw the account and then she sent it through to me like, hey, who's this? And then she tried to report the account. Yeah. And this was when he was starting off. He had like 30,000... Uh, followers he was still starting off yeah. and she asked him she would dm him and like please remove that's my sister's picture and then she got like all our other friends that were on twitter at that time and asked them to please remove it and then it got to to a point he he, he actually didn't have me as the backdrop he just had me as the profile, profile picture pic and the more we kept probing him like hey remove this and then he's like haha and then he put the the, the backdrop too yeah. and he put me too and then i went on to twitter now and I basically hit him up. I'm like, hey, please stop using my picture. Yeah, you know, nicely, like, like, you know, like, just... please, you can put a backdrop of like, you know, those Microsoft wallpapers. <laughs> if I get a, a flower or something, just don't use me. Yeah. And uh, he didn't listen. It continued. He grew. And then, uh, to be honest, I never really, it didn't bother me yeah. back in the days. It was just like, ah, oh, okay. You know, I, I never cared as much as people wanted me to care. Mm -hmm. because people hey people want me to care sure. and they make it so obvious but now it's gotten to a point where oh for some reason people believe that um because of chris xl i am bianca i don't know if that makes sense no. so it doesn't oh, make sense like so you're saying chris XL i am you. yes it's like you know some people would comment on my profile and be like ah we're not the only reason we know you is because of chris, chris XL, xl so you must thank him she's getting brand work and she's this person because of chris xl and that's not true mm -hmm. that's not true i put in work to be who i am to get the the following that i have on instagram i put in work i pitch to brands and all all these other things but now everything is attributed to it's because of chris xl and that's what kills me the most it's like like I was saying right now, if I was were to go on television, it wouldn't be, ah, Bianca, well done. It would be, ah, I'm Chris XL. Sure. She, they just trying to, the show is trying to get views because she's Chris XL. Mm -hmm. It's no longer about me and what I can perform. I can never be, I can never break into the industry now. Yeah. It's, whatever I do, it's because she's Chris XL. That's how big this account has become and yeah. it has influenced my life so much. Like, even with the branded work I do now, mm -hmm. I'll post maybe for... Okay, X brand, I post. Under the comments, ha, I'm Chris XL. You know, people, mm. somebody even once commented, um, Didi president, under brand work. Sure. And now these, these brand managers, these campaign managers, they go through comments. So now if it's no longer about what I'm advertising, now yeah. it's about Chris XL. Brands don't like that. Sure. Brands don't like that. And this whole notion that um, I've had a couple of people use this to your advantage. I mean, this person has 1.6, like milk this, milk mm. this. And... Uh, there's this thing, ne? but there's no, no such thing as bad publicity. publicity. I think that was true. I could be mistaken. I think that was true back in the day. It's not true even today. It was not true back then. It's a, it's yes. a mis I think it was, misleading. I think it was true back in the days. Now society is so sensitive. Mm. You say one, cancel him, uh, remove him off the, the, the TV show. Yeah. You, you know, you brands don't care anymore now yeah. that whole thing could see oh you and if you look at it like most people that are controversial for the wrong reasons they don't really get your your proper brands if mm. i should say like your big brands it's like, reputational risk mm, you know they'll just get like these startups that are willing to mm. pay you blah 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 so i don't want to be that kind of person and right now in my career in this influencing space that yeah. i'm in i should be further but now it's hard yeah. i showed you just last week they wanted me to work on a campaign, but it's like, uh, are you Chris XL Gonje? Mm. And now everybody believes that I'm living, milking it because of Chris and because I won't address it. This is yeah. the first time I'm actually addressing it publicly. So now everyone just thinks, oh no, she's enjoying it. And he actually followed me. He followed me back mm. on, 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 on my Twitter. And I'm just like, this guy, if only he knew. And another thing socially, mm. it's also frustrating. So... I'll be at clicks. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to oh, mention. Please feel free. This is <laughs> I'll a, be like at clicks. This is a safe space for brands. <laughs> okay. One day when we're famous, you guys will pay us. I'll be like at clicks. Hmm. I'll be uh clothing store. Sorry, are you Chris? 
yeah, <laughs> he's using my profile. I was at farmer's market uh, with a couple of friends and this little girl comes up with me with her family and she's like, hello, sorry, are you Chris? A little girl. Mm. It's, it's just following me. It's like, I'll be at an event for a brand. I'm like, hello, my name is Bianca. Are you the girl from Twitter? It's painful. I can't mm. even properly articulate how frustrated. It's like, I don't exist anymore. Yeah. It's no longer Bianca. He's kind of stolen your identity. Because there's something called um, identity theft. Where yeah, people yeah, yeah. copy your ID, etc. And they maybe steal money or whatever the case may be. In this mm. situation, you've got someone who's stolen your identity almost online to a yeah. point where they've drowned your own identity and what you stand for. Yeah. The scarier thing is what Chris Excel stands for. Because I wanted to ask, do you think you would mind if he released positive content? Or do you think the bigger issue is that it's negative content? But even if it was positive, it would be like, but that's not me. Yeah. I mean, if it was positive content, there'd be a bit of tolerance there. Like, yeah. okay, it's okay. You Even know, you're pushing good. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be so... And it wouldn't have an impact on my work like this. You've lost money. Lots of You've money. You've literally <laughs> lost money. You could... Not you could, you should. So part of the reason I wanted us to have this sit down is I'm yeah. not a legal expert. Yeah. And I'm hoping that when this drops, uh, the legal experts are going to comment and advise us on the way forward because mm. I do believe there's a case here for number one defamation um, what that means is this person is using your face to say horrendous things mm. out there which get attributed to you and not to him number two it's identity theft online and we need to have a conversation as society about identity theft online as a general because it's you now could be someone else tomorrow Yeah. what happens if on that platform they say something that ends up leading to someone's life yeah being taken whether they say something on a person's profile and they get depressed and commit suicide or chris excel says hey go do this and then someone acts on it and someone gets hurt and that gets attributed to you so we need to deal with sorry that. to cut you off i think yeah. that happened with um the i don't know if i'm allowed to say this with the ricky rick situation and okay. everyone was blaming i don't know if you remember that period when he passed on everyone was blaming chris excel pinwell I that didn't, fell on you oh, i didn't want to leave because um they would send uh stuff to my partner my mom mm. you know they, they'd send these things to people like you see you know it just blew up yeah and i was just like goodness but this is not me this is not me so yeah. it or, it's already it's already started sure now we're just waiting for that one thing and so this defamation well we're hoping before that one thing happens a, 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 a conversation like this yeah. sparks defamation stolen identity um damages you know for loss of income yeah and this guy has to be exposed um i think at some point some people try to expose him who he is where yeah, he's from etc i saw that i saw that yeah. i don't know if it was true if it was really him but even if it wasn't, the way Chris Excel was so defensive at the time, you can see he doesn't like it. And you're like, it's so ironic that you don't like being exposed when you're literally peddling yourself off as someone else. So you're scared of being seen. Yeah. And you'd rather use someone else's face. Um, I hope a lot of people who follow him are going to watch this. And even if it's just asking him nicely, please just stop. You can use an avatar. You can use like an animation. He could use you can any. use Wait, mountains can I ask or whatever. You something? Yeah. Do you think he would have had his following and everything if yeah. he didn't have me as his profile picture? I I think at the onset. So I think at the onset he used you, because he knew your face. You have you have a lot of followers on Instagram. Yeah. So he knew immediately that was going to draw attention all the people that have created fake accounts in your name, they know automatically that's going to happen. From that point of writing you, then it was the content, yeah. which I think helped him grow. Um, I don't know how far he would have grown with his own face, etc. But I know at the onset, it was very much using your face. Um, On his profile, he also has, um, I don't know if you've seen it, the only legal catfish yeah and uh that has sparked so much controversy because now people believe that him and i have an agreement sure 
And that's really not the case. I've never spoken to this guy besides asking him, please remove my profile years yeah. ago. You don't know what he looks like. I don't know what, I don't even know if it's a guy. What sure. if it's a hind? Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the other things is just discussing cyber issues, mm. especially as a world and a country that doesn't know what's happening. We've got AI generated images now. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Where you've got a, a Pope wearing a jacket We've got this new technology that is now trending where I can record something and then it's your voice. Yes, yes, yes. So in future online, um, Chris Excel will be able to take your images and make a video and with your voice and be like, hi guys, I'm Chris Excel. And you're like, ah, but it's really <laughs> the person. Yeah. So it's, it's a scary time. It's very scary. And for online, I think with Elon Musk and Twitter and the work he's doing, on Facebook, I know there were a lot of fake accounts uh, with Facebook's growth. Mm. We're going to have to speak about forcing everyone to reveal themselves, at least if they're going to be saying personal things. Yeah. If you are a brand and you're just pushing brand stuff, sure, you can have an image of something else. But if you're going to be saying hate speech to someone, if you're going to giving people personal opinions that actually affect real life, you should be able to report that account and it should be forced to be shut down. If not, show yourself, yeah. send identification, let us verify you that you really are that person. Otherwise, we will take your account down and you, we will open a criminal case against you. Because like I said, it almost becomes a matter of time, whether it's Chris Excel or someone else mm. that uses, let's say, my face on a, on a platform and says certain things or leaks certain information, let's say privileged information about government or you've got the Tabo Besta case now yeah. where they send certain things and it's like, it's this guy, I knew it. This guy says controversial things, it must be him. You're like... I might say controversial things, but I own them. This was not me. But it's like people don't care. Exactly. And and Twitter is a mob and it's become this really dark space, which I don't like. And mm. you know, now you could uh pay for a verified badge. Yes. Chris Excel is verified. So now yes. this is legit, this is him. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping he's gonna be watching this. <laughs> I don't know if you'd like to send a message to him. Um officially, whether it's him or people in his family. I can only imagine this, depending on the type of psychopath he may be, yeah. or she may be, this might get them even more hyped. But I really do hope something is going to come of this because I know personally, since you're here now, mm -hmm. I would like to get involved in trying to help. Um, not just removing your face, but ensuring that this guy either uses their, their face or um, a generic like you said, it could be a picture of an apple because mm. this is rubbish and it's not just him. There's a whole lot of other accounts that have grown very big where people are not using their faces. Okay, Ben, well, let's say he does it. He removes the profile and everything. How do we now repay the damage that's been done to Bianca Costa? We have to sue the person. That's why I'm, I'm okay, inviting we, legal minds. Let, let's sue him. Let's do all of that and yeah. then what? Because this thing is going to carry me, it's going to be everywhere now. Mm. It's going to be like, oh no, she was the Chris XL girl. Oh no. The damage to my brand, to who, I, to who I am, is I'm toast. Do you think it cannot be recovered? I don't know. Do you think a sit down like this will not maybe help with the brands? And you with know, other people? his his followers are very. This yes. is our president. Twitter is a mob. Hey, this is our president. No matter what, this is our president. They yeah. would ride for him. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I'm hoping it will do something. What would you like to say to him if he's going to be watching this or if people are going to be sending this to him? I think I would just... Oh man, I don't have anything to say, man. This no. is a form of bullying, by the way. It is. It is. I don't think I have anything to say. You know, um, I posted a TikTok, yeah? and in this TikTok... I was pretending to be pregnant. It's like when you've just eaten and, you know, yeah. so like you have the, you, I'm holding my belly. The first comment someone said was like, if this was real, Twitter would have blown up. Ah, a little Chris Excel. So I'm just like Im imagining if it continues, like when I do finally settle down and I get mm. married and I have kids, what kind of impact is this going to have on my life? Now my children will be referred to as little Chris Excels. And yeah. I don't know, man, I'm just hoping for a miracle. That if it does get sorted, that I don't have to carry this baggage anymore, this Chris XL baggage. But yeah, it's it's Do you overwhelming. Think you're okay. About? About this thing. I thought I was. 
but now it's messing with my bag, reputation, potentially love life too. Because sometimes when gents would come, they'd mm. be like, aren't you the girl on Twitter? Mm. You know? Oh no, she has a foul mouth on Twitter, you know? Mm. It's really... Do you think you're okay? Have you considered like speaking to a professional about... I, I was in therapy. <laughs> you're going to make me cry, you know? You said you're not going to cry. I asked you to not cry. I was in therapy last year. <laughs> you know? I was in therapy. I, I attended some sessions. I'm working through it. You know, we have these platforms and like we podcast and we have these chats and one of the sad things I've realized about the industry is some people invite people on for views um, uh, and to trend, which I try really hard to not be about I I I wanted you to come here so that people know who you are and what you're about. And I was really hoping that this conversation Sometimes would... Sometimes I don't even know who I am. You know? Sometimes I go to shoots and it's not, oh, it's Bianca Costa, the plaque. Are you Chris XL? Can I take a picture with you? Because you're Chris XL. I don't know. Maybe I'm being dramatic. Maybe people don't really understand... But it, it can get so overwhelming where... <sighs> it's okay. You can continue. <laughs> One of my favorite um, series is a series on Netflix called uh, Black Mirror. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. You should go see it. So there's um, an episode there called Hated by the Nation. And the episode is about mechanical bees because the world has wiped out all real bees. And the mechanical bees create these hives so that the ecosystem can keep running. And someone hacks the bees. And after hacking the bees, they post on social media something like a Twitter, a hashtag. And when they put someone's name in that hashtag, everyone retweets. And if it retweets high enough, those bees go and kill that person. So these mechanical bees get hacked and they kill whoever. You can write anyone. If you don't like your best friend because she slept with your boyfriend, these bees go and kill that person. At the end of the episode, the person who hacked the bees was trying to send a message to the world of the power of social media mobs. All these people are dead. At the end, he clicks this algorithm where everyone who has ever retweeted, the bees get sent to them to kill them. I'm saying this because a lot of us laugh on social media, on Twitter. A lot of us, when someone is being bashed, we're part of the people bashing. And we don't know the damage that that causes to a person. They have yeah. kids that have been depressed, committed suicide from cyberbullying. We don't know that at some point this might happen to us. Because what happens if this guy's real identity is exposed? And there are people close to you. You know, I'm, I'm going to use this example and I, I apologize for who it might offend. Anele Tembe, as far as we know, committed suicide, jumped off a building. And some people think it may, AF, AKA may have been involved, etc. And then AKA was, was shot and killed in Durban. And when we were looking at some of the theories of why AKA was killed, one of the theories I spoke about was it may have nothing to do with the Dembe family. It could be that someone who is close to the Dembe family would watch someone in the family cry every time AK performs, knowing that AK is moving on with his life's like, but we miss our girl. You don't know how many people you've influenced and impacted. You don't know how many people genuinely love you deeply. And what happens if a Chris Excel gets exposed and they do something crazy like kill him you know all because he refused to just when it was still nice to just apologize and change um but anyways the the point of the episode is we all need to be more conscious of the things we say and the things we do on social media because mm -hmm. one day that may come back to you and you don't know how you're going to react it's nice to laugh at bianca now in her picture but what if it's your picture 
And you thought it was fun and games until it's you. Until you're being mobbed by Twitter. Until you're getting fired at work. Until your partner's leaving. Until your children are being dogged at school. Because what happens the day you have kids and they're going to school and this account has gone from 1.6 to 5 million followers and your kids... This is not a positive account. This is not someone who's known. This could be anything. And the day you have children and you maybe decide to post them because your family would like to see your kids, this person starts posting your kids and your kids get exposed. It's, it's a really deep form of bullying, which if people are not going to take it seriously now, maybe it's going to take people being arrested, being sued. People on Twitter, the people with like no profile. Yeah with like zero or three followers who laugh and retweet. There might be a vigilante group at some point who's going to go and try and find those people and it won't be nice. All because you refuse to take a step back and be like, what am I doing? Because we're literally throwing stones at a girl's life and if something happens to her, we're then going to go laugh because we've become so morally bankrupt. Um... I wanted you to come here and people to see you so that when they go there, they're like, that is not her. Um, we've seen her. We've listened to her speak. We've heard about her family. Like she's not some girl in Joburg. She actually has a family. She's from Eswati and her family is real. She's got, she doesn't even have daddy issues. If you think she's some crazy girl on Twitter, you know, fuck women. And it's like, nah, she actually doesn't even have daddy issues. She comes from a perfect family. Like it's wild. She's an introvert. She's got dreams and there's someone blocking her dreams out there and we are part of the people helping destroy a girl's life and we don't know when it will happen to us. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. For all of us, myself, I'm sure I've commented on Chris Excel stuff. I'm sure I've laughed. Um, <laughs> We're human. You're part of the problem. I'm part of the problem. You're enabler. You're enabling him. Yeah, I'm part of the problem. And I don't know if reporting the account will help, but oh, no. I hope all of us will report. I hope all of us will comment. And I do think we need legal intervention. And if hopefully this is successful and we expose him and we sue him, he might not even have anything. Might be some sad guy living somewhere. But whatever drastic actions get happen, it should send a clear message to other people out there that you can't just go around doing what you're doing yeah. because people will come after you. And if you have a family, Chris Excel could be a lady who has a really good job somewhere and she might lose her job and she might end up divorced or her kids. It's like, but do you see what happened? And yeah. you didn't have to go this far. True. You could have actually just literally just make a picture, an animation picture, like your content will still trend even though it's trash. True. Why do you have to steal someone's identity and, and ruin their life? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, I know we're going to sit down again soon. We spoke about this off camera. Yeah. Is there anything else on like a more lighter note you'd like to speak about? Like what you're busy with in life? Um, I'm hoping that some of the brands will watch this. I've said before that brands are not like companies. Mm -hmm. Brands are like young people like you that sit that can make decisions and some of them need to be like guys this girl is actually a real person and we have the ability to put on a platform and get her to work yeah so i don't know if there's anything you want to say um well i want to do my masters so i'm in the process of applying yeah in america in america you're leaving, leaving. us <laughs> i want to that leave. sucks why america i want to leave uh they're the ones that are offering the funding okay yeah Okay. So I'm working on that. Is your dad going to let you go? He wants me to go. He's really? always been, you should travel, travel, and your mom? see the world. My mom too. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I also would like, uh, I don't want to. You have to. No, you I don't want to get married no. and have 20 kids. No, 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 no. It's about work. I don't want to say stuff when it hasn't been finalized, but there Fair are enough. a couple of things that I'm working on that are exciting in the cup coming okay. months. Yeah. That's and cool. yes, I do want to get married and have kids. Really? And raise them in a perfect Disney life like your parents? <laughs> Ooh. What would you rather? I'd be a baby mama. No, I'm kidding, man. Mm -hmm. hey, don't expose my life because I get dragged on Twitter for my life. Yeah, I'm a good person, right? You know me? 
I'm a good person, right? Yes. Ugh. You're just different. That's not. No, you just you you just different. Misunderstood. Really? Yeah. But okay. I think your intentions are good. You're not out to hurt anyone or make anyone's life miserable. You just say a lot of things that people, people, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I think we can this. I think we can shut this down, but I look forward to helping you with this Chris Excel thing. Mm -hmm. Um as best as I can. I hope this episode will make an impact not just for you, but for everyone who's cyberbullied, who's got a stolen identity, who is being trolled unnecessarily so they can get some type of justice. I hope the legal minds will help us in some way. Maybe there's a pro bono organization that's going to be like, guys, if you if this is happening to you, let's see if we can make this a thing. And I hope social media platforms are going to start pushing for us to all verify ourselves as human beings so that the trolling can stop. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to watching your career flourish because I know it will. It was always going to be a matter of time. So, And I hope I can be involved in some way in that. And if it's not him now, the guy you're with, I hope you find an amazing husband and you have a lot of children. A lot of children. <laughs> um, and yeah, man, and I look forward to meeting up with your family again soon. We have the power to destroy, um, especially online, but we also have the power to like build and inspire yeah. and motivate. And I hope we can do more of that. Bianca Costa, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I needed this. Cheers.